Hi everyone and welcome back to the podcast. It is episode 93 and I am here and so is Ian. My lovely, lovely husband, obviously. Okay, that's better. Your face said, like, how rude. That wasn't a good introduction. Yeah, that was an okay introduction. Uh, you are Ian. I am Ian. There you go. Right, so today we're going to talk about something that we started a conversation on our live stream this week about is it right to display at commercial Lego events versus ones for charity and so specifically we're probably talking about the brick festival stuff because that's the one in the uk yeah that people are all iffy about displaying for and we're trying to work out why they're iffy about it and what the best thing to do is so thoughts thoughts so yeah i think that there's the two kind of main thoughts along this i feel one is that when you are doing a show for charity you normally get a token kind of gift for doing it so um like a thank you yeah actually so uh swindon we got a little goodie bag each which had the noodle shop in it yeah a couple of other things you get a little brick to say you were there um which is quite clearly the key part right yeah uh for uh manchester we got a mug we don't use mugs, but we have mugs now. So. Yay, mugs! Um, and we got, we didn't get a set there, but we got random bags of Lego. Both of them did a free two-course meal in the evening. Swindon did that you paid a suggested small amount of money, and for that you got unlimited sandwiches and drinks and crisps and chocolate bars for the weekend. Manchester... You didn't have to donate any money, but it was a smaller selection, so it was mainly just crisps and chocolate. Yeah. Plus free tea and coffee. Yeah. Plus free parking. Yeah. So you get something for going. Well, they. I think what they're trying to do is make it so that you're not completely out of pocket, because obviously yeah. you do have to pay for like a hotel and stuff, yep. depending on where the show is. Yeah. They're just trying to give you some sort of thank you and like cover some yep. of your costs. Yeah. Which I think is the right thing to do yep. because you're you're the main attraction at those kind mm. of shows. You're bringing people through the door, so yeah. it's kind of key. Yes. If you contrast that to something like Brick Festival, where they have a slightly weird system, but basically you get a voucher, a Lego voucher, if you display your first one in the year is twenty five quid, then it's fifty, then seventy five for a third, and then if you do a fourth one, it goes back to twenty five. I find it. I just, that's why they don't just do 50 for everything and not have to have this weird bouncing up and down thing. But anyway, so you get that. You also get free food and drink while you're there. You do get still a little event brick. So they've still Sounds got that good. going with them. So, so you, can I just say, those two things sound pretty comparable. So I would say the one with the £25 gift voucher seems comparable. Right, you think you get more for going... I'd say if you go a second time and you get the 50 you're getting slightly more if you okay. get 25 you're getting more. So the question is, if we're saying the £25 one is comparable to doing something like Swindon or um, Manchester, where it's for charity, shouldn't you be getting more if people are trying to make money off you? Why are you doing shows in the first place? I think that's the key thing. Mm. Are you doing it to try and make money? Or are you doing it because you just enjoy the, the challenge of building something and the social aspect of it? If that's the case, why do you need anything in at all? Okay, so I guess the point is when there's two events on the same weekend, you can only pick one. You pick the one that's closest to your house. You pick one that's, Some people will pick the one that's for charity. Some people will pick the one where you get more back from it. You know, if you're looking at, we've only got time to do three shows in a year yeah. because, you know, you've got to sort out childcare, you've got all this other stuff. Where are you going to put your effort? And I think at that point, if you're saying it's £25, I would say you're always going to go for the charity ones because it's, as I said, comparable to getting the £25 voucher. What? Plus you get the warm, fuzzy feeling of it being charity. What if you don't like charity? What if you don't like charity? Well, you know, that's up to you. <laughs> so I think there's that. There's the feeling that they're trying to make money off you. It should be more than a token gesture as a thank you. They're trying to make money? Yes. I don't think they're trying to make money off you. I don't, I don't know. That's a very inflammatory comment well, they they're, us, they're using you to help them make money yes but i don't know that's the same thing it's worded very i don't know but i feel that they're using you for more than just the mock you know you are there you are kind of meant to keep an eye on your set you know things are down to you 
it doesn't feel like it's a slightly more professional outfit. I mean, we've had people who have had minifigs stolen from displays. Yeah. Now, that was... Uh, we, we haven't. We haven't, but we know people who have. Was it Manchester? Yeah, I think it was I, just Manchester. Yeah. I know I've heard of other people that having them stolen at other ones as well, but I can't remember which ones. Well, they, I think it was New Zealand. That was a conversation we had once. Yeah, Someone had in New multiple Zealand. ones. Mm, okay. And you kind of feel like, that's fine. It's for charity. They can't afford... The show can't afford to do anything. You are responsible for your mark. Yeah. If it's a Brick Festival one, would you want compensation? Well, because you think they should be providing some sort of security. Because that's the thing. You pay to go to the ones in the US. Do they offer that security or...? So the ones... That, so the US ones are a bit more complicated. So if, we, if you look specifically at how Chicago Brick World works, you've got that you don't pay to display, but in order to display, you basically have to have paid for a more expensive package which has extra days that you're there yeah. it has non-public days where it's only people who have paid that extra money who get to look around mm-hmm. i think there's some evening stuff as well so you have to pay that in order to have the ability to display and then you don't pay to display right what we've seen is that generally when those are displays are on for the public days that it's a bigger event hall, they have more space and they mm. put barriers up so people can't get as close to the mocks. Yeah. And so therefore, displays do just leave them. I wouldn't feel comfortable leaving a mock for a long time at any shows we've done. And not necessarily because people steal it, but as kids reach into it and knock stuff over. Yeah. You know, we did have a small toddler try and steal some little Bruni figures off oh, the one yeah, at Swindon. Swindon. You know, so I don't feel you could leave it. Yeah. And so, so you're not just turning up to display your mock, you're also there to act as security, to act as entertainment, to act as a guide. You know, you, there will be people who will randomly ask you where the toilets are and you point out where the toilets are kind of thing. It, it's a lot more than just showing up with your mock. Right. So it it does feel like they're being slightly cheeky with how little they're compensating you. Well, they also have the... You can be a volunteer at the festivals as well. You don't have to bring a thing. Yes. And I think you still then get the... Is it exactly the same thing? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't, I haven't mm. got quite far enough through the pe- website yet. Mm. I was just looking at the... There's other options, apparently. You don't have to get Lego store vouchers. You could also get um, money to spend at the event that you're actually at. Oh, okay. Or you can choose to get a trader table for... For essentially free. Yes. Or you can choose to donate to charity. So you can still do some good in yes. the world. And that's the thing. People mm. are very against the Brick Festival ones, but they do have an element of charity to them. We've got the yeah. charity Tombola. Mm. So I don't know if any percentage of their tickets go to that. It's not easy to find. I didn't think they did. No, I imagine not. I've never seen anything saying that. They will normally have, as you say, a charity tombola thing. I say there's that kind of what rewards you get, what compensation. If you're going to display everywhere, then I don't think it really matters. You'll go to all of them unless they're on the same day, in which case you'll pick maybe the one that's closest. I think the most convenient one. Um and gets more If you're only going to do a few shows in a year, I think that I would rather do the charity ones rather than going for the ones, the commercial one. Right. Like I said, that's only the one element of it. The other one I think you've talked about a bit is that some of the Brick Festival ones seemed expensive. Yeah. We're a family of four, so you end up having to purchase a family ticket. We wouldn't necessarily have to purchase a family ticket because Hayley, I think, has been under the age limit. Anyway, right. but you don't save any money really because right. of the f- the fees because they have a processing fee for each ticket and so when you buy three tickets you have to pay that processing fee each time hmm. whereas if you just buy the family ticket you only pay it once right and so you save nothing right doing three tickets versus okay so a family, a family ticket is essentially the same as three tickets yeah. Pretty much. So I I think the ones we've been to, it's been like £17. And I think these are our flat fee. I'm not entirely sure. I think they have a, this is our charge to get in. And that's the bit I find a little bit frustrating is that there is a lot of growth in the Brick Festival ones at the moment. They've they've gone from like one show, like the Milton Keynes was their original one. Mm. Then last year they bumped up to like 10 different locations. And this year they've got 40 shows. Right. Which is massively exploding. Mm. And it's a good thing because it means that people are getting a local Lego show. So that's exposing more people to Lego. But they are not making sure that there's like a consistency of how good they are. Yeah. They're just trying to get them 
up and running and i think they should be a minimum level of there must be 50 percent mocks 50 percent traders before mm. they will charge a certain price right. uh, that that to me would make more sense mm. that you're getting the value yeah or at least they're advertising what percentages they're going to get yeah like if you book tickets to a show expecting to see 20 mocks and there's three yeah. then you've not got your value from it. Yes, there are other things that you could be doing. So for kids, there's quite a lot of activities. But not the all kids want with, to do the activities. And the problem with the activities is, they, in some cases we've seen them, that there's pretty much always an activity on. But I think in most of the Brick Festival ones, the activities are at specific times. Yeah, so if you're not there at If that you time. turn up and the activity isn't for another two hours... Yeah. There's not necessarily enough to keep you there for two hours. Yeah. So I think there's that worry that, therefore, if you are displaying, you could end up kind of feeling embarrassed. Yeah, I think that's... Well, I, as long as your mock is good, then you feel like you're contributing. But I think if you're the only mock, that's a lot of pressure as well. Yeah. And, and, I, I'm not saying there's ever been a, a brick festival where there's only been one mock. And that's not what I'm saying. But we have definitely heard that the balance is off in quite a few yes. of them. And we've been to several yeah. where we felt the balance is off as well. Mm. And yes, people do want to buy Lego. So having trade tables is not a bad thing. But if that's all you're getting, or yeah. if that's the majority of what you're getting, unless there's a, a good deal for you, then you can come away disappointed. Yeah. And particularly, I feel, with young children, if all there is is trade tables then it's completely useless for them they don't want to sit there while you go and work out which cmf figure you're missing no well, i've definitely found that at the yeah festivals when yeah. i've gone off to look for stuff the girls don't follow me no they're not interested so so i think there's that and maybe that's just a case of the shows need to just do better but it's it's that how do you get that momentum how do you attract more people so then people are kind of i don't know prouder to be there yeah so there is a Another point which I think may be a cause of some contention. So, lug bulk. Lug bulk is a system where once a year, if you are part of a recognised lug yeah. who sign up for it, you can get parts from Lego at a discount, the level of which we are not allowed to discuss. Yeah. Um, we don't talk about lug bulk. No. No, but no, so no. the idea of this is that you're meant to be buying parts that you use in a mock that somehow promotes Lego. Yeah. So it might be that you're taking pictures of it and putting it on your lug's website or your lug's instagram account yeah. it could be you're taking them to shows that kind of thing that's the point of it yeah now they tried to bring in a rule where lug bulk couldn't be used for shows where you were getting paid for turning up yeah which it led to all sorts of stupidness because technically getting every show we have been to we have been where we've displayed we have been paid for getting there we have been given stuff that is payment. Yeah. Regardless of whether it's money or in a little bag, it's still payment from a tax point of view. You should be claiming the tax on any goodie bags you get from shows if you earn more than the amount that you're allowed under your tax-free allowance for a hobby. So you have been paid. And so Lego had to basically cancel this idea. It just wasn't feasible to do it. But the thought is that that was brought in because of things like Brick Festival. Yeah. They don't want lug bulk to be used at because because for one thing you know lego if you are doing a show as part of a lug lego imposes quite a lot of rules on it yeah, such it as is. you know it has to be lego it can't be lego compatible bricks yeah so you know we have seen cases where you have third parties selling stuff that is compatible so like um particularly up north there's a guy who does the motors that we use they aren't lego but that's allowed but if you were going in with a kobe set that would definitely not be allowed for yeah you. Lego tools. Also, obviously, it can't be sponsored by anyone because Lego want to be want it to be advertising Lego. They don't want it to be advertising the local Smiths, for instance. Seems fair. Although Bricktastic was also sponsored by Brickset, so yes. How does that work? So Brickset is in LAN, isn't it? It's a recognised yeah, Lego different. fan media thing, and so therefore, no, it's not. Is it? It's not a fan media one, is it? It's the other one. It's the other one. What's the other one? online community maybe but anyway so yeah so that's that's different to an independent toy retailer trying to sponsor right. an event so you know 
There's a lot of rules. And so Lego don't really seem to like these commercial ones. And if they're trying to crack down on it, that will have the impact of some people in lugs will therefore be wary of it. Yeah. And who knows if Lego are going to try and do more, whether they're going to try and impose more rules on what lug bolt can be used for. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out next year, because obviously this year... As I say, they, they had to back out the changes. Yeah, they might work out a better way of mm. wording it to make it clearer. And so, I might if... just specifically say, unless you're going to a brick festival one, <laughs> then no. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing when people make rules and they've got a specific thing in mind, why do they not just say that? Is that because it could then be like fought back on your discriminating specifically against this thing? or Possibly. Mm. Or it would be very easy for brick festival just to tweak their name slightly. <laughs> And then it would no longer apply. So, you know, there's a whole heap of different reasons why they're trying to do it. And I'm guessing the UK isn't the only place where this is happening. Mm. Well, no, We when you hear them talk about ones in America as well, mm. there's this, I think, Brick Festival equivalent, or yeah. it's the same, I don't know. Yeah. They definitely have the same view as us. And that's the thing, mm. it's, a, it's a very prevalent view. Yeah. And I don't know how fair it is. And that's the thing, I'm, tr- yeah. I'm trying to work out where I sit. Mm. I know that personally I've been to Brick Festival shows and I've come away disappointed and it feels like a lot of money. But I also know that I went to like five in a row mm. and therefore am I getting the wrong, like the money point of view? Like, I've spent it five times so it feels worse. I don't know, because out of... I thought it was only four in a row. Yeah, but okay. But if we say out of those four, that there were some that were really bad. Mm. If you'd have just gone to that one... You'd still be It would have still been really bad. Yeah. It's hard. Mm. And then there's but, another... But if we're all thinking... that If we're all having the same view, then no one's going to display, and they're not going to get any better. Mm. So someone's got to bite the bullet and say, they can't be that bad. Let me yeah. take my awesome there stuff. There are some people doing it, and... As we said, if what you're getting out of displaying is that you're getting exposure or you're treating it as a social event or all those of different things, then you don't really care which event you're going to. No. You know, as you said, you might just pick the closest ones. And if you're going with your friends and you're spending a whole day hanging out and someone's paying for your food, yeah, that's a, a no-brainer as well. Yeah. So I think it's you've got to work out what you want to get out of the event mm. and you've got to hope that there's going to be enough people that make these events better as yeah. we go on yeah. because there's so many of them. Yeah. I think there's it's got to a point now where you can't go to all of them. No. So that kind of makes it better. Mm. You don't feel like, oh, I want to see this one, I want to see that one. You just go, oh, I'll go to my local yeah. one, and that'll do. Yeah. Look how many there are. There are. Uh, apparently, the Milton Keynes is this weekend. I didn't know that. No. Because the Milton Keynes one is where it started, and we've been to the Milton Keynes one twice now. Yeah. Was we the did... Milton Keynes one the first one we went to? Yeah. Yeah. And I'd say they're good. Yes. So that one's a good one. Mm. The London Brick Festival seemed very Star Warsy, and we didn't like the we location. We didn't like the London one at the all. The Birmingham one was rubbish. Yeah. And the Bournemouth one was very cellar heavy, but was at least local. <laughs> yeah. Bournemouth was a bit complicated because they took it over halfway through, didn't they? And then yeah. one of the groups who was helping to run it pulled out because of that, and it all got a bit political. Yeah, I don't see the list. I'm on the page of like volunteering your mock to go, hmm. and I don't see the blockbuster one. So this is the next step up from a brick festival i think is right so they're going for a bigger show mm. but i still don't see it oh here we go blockbuster so this is in september at the yeah. nec and it says the ultimate event for lego fans it's um i mean they're very woolly in what they say there's going to be there mm. but then i guess that's the, the point of marketing is it make it sound amazing also i don't know how much they know what's going on at this point i mean they're still trying to get people to go i'm assuming it doesn't it doesn't make it clear whether it's bigger than a brick festival Hmm. it is two days whereas i think the brick festival ones tend to only be one day yeah i did see i think there's two brick festival events on the same weekend yeah i think you've got a saturday one and then the sunday one somewhere else this one's got its own like website Hmm. and it's got big letters blockbuster but it's at the nec brick live was at the nec that was a massive show Hmm. i worry that this has got a lot to live up to yeah the blockbuster will offer a totally unique and exclusive selection of awesome lego displays that's interesting what what do they mean by exclusive well exclusive means not seen elsewhere yeah well we should go then yeah see details of our awesome activities will 
be added soon. This is the thing. I don't want to purchase tickets until I know what I'm getting. £12 for an adult. Mm. Oh, and they are selling weekend tickets. So it sounds like they're trying to pitch it as you might want to be there all weekend, which yeah. sounds like it's got to deliver a lot. Yes. There's no family ticket either. No. Part of me worries that it's just the same thing, but more expensive. There is that worry. But I don't I don't want to mm. prejudge. Yeah. I mean, I think this is one. It's going so for them to put on something equivalent to Manchester, it's going to be more expensive for them. Mm. So if you think at Manchester, you had the big brick pits, they are provided by Lego. Yes. Whereas all of this stuff, Lego aren't going to be providing any of it. So you know, you've got to. They've got to be paying more. So it's going to be interesting. So I think they need to be more upfront with exactly what you're getting because that will encourage more people to actually go. Mm. If you've been to a Brick Festival one and been disappointed before, not having clearer there'll be this mm. many mocks or there'll be this level makes yeah. it harder to, As to said, be I think willing to the go. The worst one we've been to is the Birmingham one. See, I got a set at Birmingham, so I quite liked it. Yeah. What did you not like about Birmingham? That there were hardly any marks. See, I think the Birmingham one might have been better than the Bournemouth one for me. The Bournemouth one was disappointing. No, Bournemouth definitely had more marks. Mm. I mean, if you think Bournemouth had the you find the minifigs with the letters, I don't think Birmingham had enough marks to do that, did it? Uh, I think we just didn't do it. Did we just not bother? I'm not. It's uh, They all munge into one mm. after a little while. You also had the stupid thing that they let us out an exit so we could get some fresh air because it was stuffy and not nice inside and with the girls we needed to get some air. And then they wouldn't let us back in. Yeah, yeah. And it was, so it's in, was it in the Bird's Factory? Yeah, the Custard Factory. In the Bird's Custard Factory. And so the exit you'd gone out, you had to walk around the entire factory yeah. and car park to get back in. Yeah. Was not that nice. That definitely did more though. Yeah. I, I think that was not a mm. uh, thing. But I'm wondering, because I said that show wasn't very good, like Milton Keynes, quite good, very rubbish, but then this one, is in Birmingham so the local people are they going to go oh we went to that last year it wasn't very good therefore we'll not go or is the fact that it's got a a different name and of enough that the Birmingham one? Yeah. What's the different name? The Blockbuster one. Oh, right, okay. Because there's, there is still a Birmingham Brick Festival in the right. Festival Factory, I think. I think they're doing mm. the same location again. It's un, it's unclear. Yeah. I think they're, they're going to get the benefit of the fact that it's at the NEC, mm. people buying tickets. I just, I'm worried that people might be disappointed. But yeah. ultimately, if you have a mock and you're proud of it and you want to show it off, I don't think it matters where you take that mock. I think you should pick whichever place suits you hmm. as long as the they're transparent that like if they say something's going to charity it's going to charity yeah. and you're happy with what you're getting back out of it so either exposure social time or just the feel good feeling that comes with showing off your mock hmm. then it's fine i think we've got to give all of the locations a chance lego is getting out to more people hmm. and that's a good thing right yes not sure. Do you worry that... So, did you say there's 40 That's what it says on there, on there. One in Essex, probably near Blue Water. Probably. I read there was 40. Is that too many? Is that going to cause people not to go to a charity ones? Because you said this means that the local ones, but there are local ones all over the place. You know, we've had... I think over Easter, there are two in Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, two, both in Southampton? One, I don't know whether you'd count it as Southampton yeah, or not. Yeah, they're both Southampton. Um... But they are very small ones. They're not massive events. Yeah. But then are these. But they're small ones for local people to go to, raise a bit of money for local charities. Yeah. and they don't tend to have that skew of all the sellers. Mm. Like, the local events are just mainly mocks, aren't they? Yes. So... So is having all of these brick vessel ones going to detract from those small local ones? You know, if it's in a place where there aren't any more local ones, then that's fine. But that, I don't think... That's generally true. Most places they have small local ones, which I mean, we're talking about, you know, in a village hall, yeah, a, a few tables, hall. a pound to enter, you know, that kind of and, show. And when you're paying a pound to enter, mm. if there's only three mocks, you're not overly bothered, are yeah. you? That's the thing. The lower the price, the easier it is for you to come away happy. Yeah. So I think maybe looking at the prices, so I'm just going to, let's buy tickets. Let's not buy tickets, but. Just remind myself of the price for the Milton Keynes one. Is it the same for all of them? I know that in terms of buying a table to sell, it's more expensive for London. So I don't know if the tickets at London are also more expensive. Yeah, I think the tickets have gone up. £6 adult, £4 child. Is it a different location? 
pronoun. Lego yeah. on ice. Lego on. Can you imagine? <laughs> That's going to lead to many mocks being dropped, isn't it? Uh, imagine trying to go across an ice rink carrying a mock. That they should do that on Lego Masters. Because I always find that funny on Lego Masters when they have to move their stuff across. Yeah. Put it on ice, that'd be even better. Doncaster looks like it's the same. Yeah. So what about the London one? Is the London one? Because that's normally the one where they might charge more. Yeah, so yeah. it's more expensive at London. Not hugely. £7, £5. Or twenty pound for family. Yeah, so the early bird has gone up from twelve to fifteen pound. Who needs the early bird? Though? Okay, so well, because no, if they're doing, they're selling, then the early bird's more important, isn't it, to get the deals? It's true. That's one of the things I find slightly weird about. Um, Bricktastic. Yeah, Bricktastic had a quiet hour, yeah. which is meant to be for people who don't like crowds, who need the quieter time to look round without getting overwhelmed. But it also but tends they don't to police it, so. Yeah, you get a lot of people who what want would? to be there first because they want to be able to look through the stalls and try and get any deals before the other people are there. I think it still kind of has the same effect, though, because all of those people rush straight over to the sellers. So the people who want a quiet, uncrowded yeah. display area still get that. What about the people who want a quiet, quiet place to buy stuff? It's just it's the luck of the draw. People yeah. want to buy, buy, buy. Buy, buy, buy. Sorry, I don't know. What <laughs> yes, you do. I do, yeah. <laughs> I didn't intend for that to happen. It just I said it weird, and then I had to sing. Right, so I was summing up earlier. You were sorry. Go where you want. Don't badmouth things too much. Like give an honest opinion. That's why I do reviews of shows. But don't tar all Brick Festival with the same brush, and give them a chance. And if you want to make them better, volunteer to display at them and yeah. see how it goes. Like if you haven't volunteered to display at them, then you probably haven't got enough grounds to have an mm. opinion. Yeah. And that's where I leave it. I would say make sure you know what's going on when you are displaying. So where is the money going? Because particularly with Brick Festival taking over some places, you may have gone to them previously when they were going to charity. Yeah. They may not. And, you know, it's always best to know that up front when you make the decision rather than finding out later. But if they take it over and you, you don't get told, that's not really... That yes. is not a good thing to do. No. So that's, I don't know if that has happened, but... They need to be cautious with that. Like, if they're taking yeah. over a charity show, they make it clear that it's no longer charity, or it yes. is still charity, and it's just a different show. Yeah. Or next year it won't be, kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I would still say, if you are choosing where to go, I would still favour charity ones over commercial ones. I favour... Is it close to my house? Yeah. But that's just because I have to drive. Yeah. You don't care because you have yeah. to drive there. Yeah. Each person's going to have their own criteria for judging yeah. one. It's just important to have all the facts beforehand. Yeah. And obviously, you know, check out the reviews of ones to find out what they were like the previous years if you can. Yeah. And if you want to do that, then I can link up our yep. show review playlist right now. Go. Good. Lined it up there. I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm summing up. Sorry. Stop talking. Oh, I'm sorry. You want to listen to any other episodes of the podcast? I can link those also at the end and I know your silence quiet and we'll be back next week where I'll let Ian talk again maybe shush have a good week everybody bye you can say goodbye oh thank you bye